she's wide awake now that we're done with her update video and we're on to the postpartum video. Say hi guys. You gotta learn the ropes, girlfriend. Say hi. <laughs> Miss Addie is one week and two days old today. I just did a video all about Adeline, all of her whole first week of life. So this video is going to be, look at that head control. This video is going to be all about how I'm doing postpartum. I will link a video down below if you wanna go see all everything about Addie for the whole first week of life and all of her updates and stuff. So go ahead and find that below. But this is gonna be more focused on like me and how I'm doing postpartum, like especially after how crazy my birth was. Well, not, not the birth itself, but like the after part of birth, how I'm handling the whole recovery. So I had her nine days ago now, so we're just over a week postpartum. This isn't going to be talking so much about like how my labor and delivery went, but I am planning on making a whole video talking about my thoughts and feelings on my whole labor and delivery. If you haven't seen that video, definitely go watch our birth video. But this video is just gonna be more focused on how I'm doing postpartum. So immediately after I had her, they checked me out and made sure and to, to see if I had any tearing or anything like that. And I did not have any tearing, so that's good, which has definitely made my recovery so much better than it could have been. With Lilia, I tore, and that was just like the worst recovery of my life. I did not tear with her, and so that has made things definitely a lot easier, I think. After I had her, my swelling actually wasn't too bad. I feel like it should have been a lot worse for what my body went through. I was swollen for probably about two days tops. And then like now being nine days postpartum and since then, if I like walk too much or I'm doing too much, I know I'm just like on my feet a lot, I'll kind of start feeling a little swollen too again. Um, but for the most part, it's pretty much fine. As far as my bleeding goes, I kind of forgot how minimal it was. And then I went back and I watched my postpartum video with Landon and I realized that it was the same thing with him. I kind of assumed that I was gonna be bleeding a lot more than I really am. But my bleeding at this point is almost nothing. It's pretty much stopped. I still do wear a pad just in case because I am still bleeding here and there, especially if I'm like on my feet a lot. I'll get some very minimal bleeding, but for the most part, it's just, it's so, it's like almost non-existent. It's very, very little. So I'm definitely thankful for that. Nursing is going absolutely fantastic. She's a great nurser. I don't know if I'm even gonna really do like a whole video talking about like our nursing journey because it's honestly just been a breeze. I'm sure part of it is because I'm just like used to breastfeeding. This is the fifth child that I've breastfed, you know, so I kind of know what I'm doing and she really, she's a pro. Like she came out just knowing what to do. You're watching mama talk, huh? Immediately after she was born, I mean immediately, they put me onto the bed. You can see in the video when they put me onto the bed she latches on within 30 seconds like immediately it was just so natural for her and I could not have asked for it to come out any better so I'm definitely thankful for that I have had very little um, nipple soreness a lot of people were thinking that I was still breastfeeding Landon I stopped breastfeeding him way back in like end of February early March right before he turned two so we've been done for a while so my nipples were not quite used to breastfeeding as much as like when I had Landon and Caden was still nursing so that I, no, I remember there being like no soreness at all but this time there was a little bit of soreness but it was just so little it lasted maybe four days where it would hurt and it was just like right when she would latch on it would hurt for like 30 seconds and then it would go away and it would be fine and now there's it doesn't hurt at all. She's back. She's just absolutely perfect. She's a great nurser. My milk came in, I think I talked about this a little bit, but my milk came in at about a day and a half after I had her. So I had her at 5, 5.27 a.m. on Monday. And then Tuesday in the middle of the night, um, I suddenly felt, started, I could tell that my milk came in. So it was just about a day and a half, I guess almost two days before uh, my milk started coming in. A lot of people have been asking about my muscle separation and how that is, and I will show you guys my stomach. You guys will get to see it, but I honestly feel, I don't feel like it's any worse than it was um, after I had Landon, but it's definitely huge. I mean, it's, I, I honestly just don't think it can get any worse at this point. A significant amount of muscle separation and muscle tearing. Um, my hernia is very much still there. You'll see it. But again, I don't really feel like it's worse. So that at least I'm thankful for. I bought a belly band and I will put a link to the one that I got down below because I cannot remember the name of it. But I just got one off of like Amazon and I actually really liked it. So if you're looking for a belly band to wear immediately after delivery, I definitely recommend that one. I wore it 
pretty much as soon as I could after birth and I like never took it off. I did wear it some nights to sleep, but then it just got really uncomfortable and so I took it off to just to sleep and shower and that was it and I wore it 24 seven all the time, the rest of the time. And because my muscle separation is so large, I have zero, um, support for like my core and my back the muscle separation causes a lot of back pain because you don't have anything holding your body up pretty much so the belly binder definitely makes a huge huge difference oh that was a good bark and then did you spit up on me i think you spit up on me let me see yep oh yep you did you did you spit up all over me and in my hair so since then i have actually outgrew the belly binder that i bought and it or outgrew like undergrew <laughs> basically it, it's too big now so i folded it all the way over to the tiniest part that it could velcro to and it's too big now to wear for it to really help me out at all so i am back to wearing uh, the one that i wear all the time like when i'm not pregnant it's called a squeam i'll put another link down below to that that one that i wear you'll probably see the lines from it so i apologize for that but if i don't wear it i literally feel like my guts are bless you bless you bless you if i don't wear it i literally feel like my guts are pouring out of me i can't think of any other better way to explain that one thing that i was actually prepared for this time because i remember with landon i like totally forgot that you had these um, are those postpartum contractions and if nobody told you before once the baby comes out your contractions don't stop Your uterus has to constantly contract to go back to the size that it was before you got pregnant And in order to do that your body has contractions They have postpartum contractions and my god those things hurt They are very comparable to just being in labor So I mean it's obviously better than like the worst part of labor, but they still freaking hurt. I had those for about two days after I had her, and then since then they've just kind of disappeared and they went away, so that's a good sign. I mean, you want your uterus to contract down, back down to its normal state, but it's not fun. At my first postpartum appointment with my midwife, she did say that she did not want me picking up anything that weighed more than the baby, especially because of how the delivery went and like all the trauma that my body went through. She told me a minimum of one week, preferably for two weeks, she wanted me on bed rest. Because I've had so many kids and my uterus has held so many babies, and then on top of that because of the twin pregnancy, and then on top of that because of the postpartum hemorrhaging that I had and like the whole placenta being stuck and all that stuff. I'm definitely more at risk for a uterine prolapse. Is that what that's called? So she wants me off my feet as much as possible. Thank God I have so much help. It's not only my amazing husband, but my amazing mom and my best friend and my grandma. And I just have so many hands-on help with all of the other kids because she doesn't want me picking up anything that weighs more than the baby and that's really hard when you have a lot of other kids so i have been staying off my feet as much as possible unfortunately you can't it's just impossible to avoid um all kinds of physical activity when you have four other kids or six other kids depending on when it is so when i delivered i was up to 185 my weight was up to 185 and i started at 150 so i had gained 35 pounds this pregnancy and um, it was like the day that I delivered I was weighing at 185 So now today I just weighed myself and I'm down to 163 So I have lost over 20 pounds, which is fantastic But I still have another like 13 pounds before I'm back to my pre-pregnancy weight And I would like to lose even more than that because my pre-pregnancy weight before all of my babies was 135 So I can't complain too much though. I have lost over 20 pounds in just a week So I think that is actually pretty much it for my postpartum portion of the portion portion of this vlog so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna show you guys my one week postpartum belly okay so here is with the shirt on sorry i'm like half in pjs so here's with the shirt on and then here's with the shirt up and then you can see in the front right here um See, this is from my belly band that I was wearing, but you can see my hernia is right here. And so you can see on the side, that is part of my hernia right there. And then like the indent, it looks so weird. But for having five kids and being one week postpartum, I mean, I'm not complaining too much. So I'm going to go ahead and measure too. I never did get around to doing a 40 week update, but at 39 weeks, I believe I was like 45 and a half or something along those lines. So... I am back down to 38, just over 38 and a half, it looks like. 
But that is it for this week's update, guys. Make sure you follow me on Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram. I will have those links down below. Let me know if you guys have any questions. And like I said, I will be doing a like labor and delivery talk through video or like my thoughts and feelings on how the birth went. That is it for this video, guys. And I will talk to you guys for our next video. Bye. We are here to do Addie's one week update. Yay! So we have a lot to update on. We're gonna update on her and we're gonna update on me, how I'm doing postpartum.